no way you can come back now and tell me I don't have time. So that's what I do. Good morning, guys. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Any uh, any Tony Robbins fans out there? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Good. 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 I used, I I used to be like a a Tony skeptic. Like um, I used to get weirded out by how people would like really, I don't know, like put this guy up on a pedestal. Uh, because you know I'm not, I'm not really in, into that kind of stuff and i thought it was weird you know a lot of things that people took away from it until i went to a upw in uh, in newark a couple years back and it was uh, literally it was eye-opening experience it was really really cool uh, i've um taken a few other of his uh, of his courses since then and uh, we actually have the opportunity to see tony live in dallas texas this year in, in august so if, if you guys have never seen tony in person before i would say that it, it is a must it's not even like a wish it's a must like you must figure out a way to get there dallas this year is going to be for some of you who have never been to an exp event or have never been to a a tony robbins event it's literally like this could be a life-changing event for you guys definitely career changing event for sure and i i don't say this lightly I just came back from the, the Cabo event and that was for me literally. And I even think it was life-changing for Micah and Hamoudi. Like since they've been back, they've been different people. Like I, I feel like I've, I've really re- been reborn again. It's just been in a way of, uh, of business. It's just been, I can't even describe it. Like I've been on fire. Um, my, my calendar for this week is like completely jam packed. And that's because of all the effort I've been putting in from the ideas I got from just that one event alone. So some of you may think to yourselves like, oh, it's a, it's a thousand bucks, it's $2,000. Or if I take my, my spouse, or if I take my kids with me, it's an inconvenience. I'm gonna tell you right now, guys, there is probably a thousand reasons for you not to do something, but there was one reason for you to do something that'll literally engulf all those thousand other reasons. So if you guys haven't done so yet, I really, really strongly suggest you guys take a look at that event coming up in, in August. That would that would mean the world to you and your family. I, I Trust me when I tell you that. It's not going to be in a sunny island, unfortunately. It's in Dallas, Texas. But I heard there's you know, a couple of things to do in Dallas if you guys want to enjoy yourselves when you're not at the event. But definitely take a look at it. You guys can easily find that. It's called Build Event 22, I think it's called. Let me, let me look it up real quick. I think it's called Build Event 22. Yeah, it is called Build Event 22. I'm going to put it in the chat for you guys to check it out. Uh, prices range, obviously, from really good seats to not so good seats. Well, there's not, I don't think there's a bad seat in the house, I'll be honest with you. But if you want to be all up, all up in the front, maybe next to some of the big people at, at the company, then it'll cost you a little bit more. But, you know, you can literally, if you really want to get there, you can, you can split an Airbnb with someone. You know, you can economize in, in one way or another and just get the cheapest ticket you can. But I'm telling you, the event itself is going to be very powerful. All right. So that's enough. Enough sales pitch. Lewis, Lewis I had a question. What um, do you have more info on the event? As yeah, it's, like, it's in the chat. Gonna talk about? I just know, but like, because I, I, I went on the link, but I don't really see. uh, They don't really explain like what's going to happen uh, at the event. Like, what Oh, you mean there? like the, you mean the uh, the agenda? Yes. Um, yeah, I see it right here. Hold on. Okay, or maybe I missed it. You guys see my screen? Yep. Yes. Yeah, it says agenda. So uh, agenda Tuesday, op- uh, main opening session on the 23rd, 2 to 6. Uh, Wednesday, August 24th from 9 to 12 is a bonus session. Yeah, but it's very gen- I, I feel like it's very general. Yeah. Yeah, no, I see what you're saying. Okay, so this is just the schedule, not so much the agenda. But I'll tell you this much. It's going to be a lot of the uh, big producers, a lot of the big attractors at EXP Realty, and possibly also some of the people in um, a- executive positions, such as, you know, maybe we'll hear from the, the, the president, uh, Jason, or maybe we'll hear from, uh, there, there were so many great people. We heard from um, Glenn, you know, Glenn spoke at the last one, you know, you know, everybody has a different personality. So I really think that you guys, oh, look at this. This is another thing I want to tell you guys is that these things sell out so quickly. Like it literally will sell out right beneath your feet and you'll be scrambling at the last minute trying to get a ticket um, on a, uh, on um, the workplace, on our Facebook workplace. 
The general admission, it was 297, completely sold out. Next one is silver, 497. Uh, and then obviously you can go all the way up to $2,000. So if you guys are thinking of using this event to attract other agents, it's getting more expensive by the day. So if I were you, this is what I did at the last event. I actually bought three tickets ahead of time because I knew that if I bought three tickets ahead of time, it would force me to find three people to fill those. You understand? So you got to yeah. commit first, figure it out later. So I would, I would, first of all, if you're not in that position, I get it. What I would suggest is that you get yourself there first. You know, um, there, there's this guy named Don Yoakum who I met in, in um, Cabo. Uh, he was a really nice guy. He's, we, we've stayed connected. He's a really nice person. He, he helped our entire group and he's not even in our group. He used to own 30 uh, Keller Williams franchises and a uh, big guy at KW. And uh, obviously he's at EXP now. And he was saying that, and excuse me if I butcher this, you know, I'm not, I don't have the best of memories, but he said that real estate agents will, will be graded uh, on how they do this. So for instance, if you don't go to the events at EXP, then you're, you're going to be labeled with an F. Okay. You don't go. If you do go to the uh, events, uh, then you're going to be, uh, if you do go to an event, you, you've gotten a D uh, like in school, you know, like you've gotten these grades. If you bring somebody from your, from your group, or you convince someone to come from your team, then you get a C. Well, if you bring somebody from outside of the company that you want to track, then you get a B. If you schedule time while you're there to have a lunch or to have a coffee with one of the big attractors at the company, then you're an A student. So do you guys understand like what he's trying to give us is kind of like that visual where it's not just about getting us there. It's also about getting us there. And what else can we do with the opportunity to really make ourselves uh, that much better? You guys get it? Good. I hope you guys are all booking your tickets right now. Uh, yeah, I heard that this place uh, where it's being held at is beautiful. Uh, it's called uh, the Gaylord Texan Resort and Convention Center. I've heard a lot of other people do events here. I heard it's like the nicest place. Cool. All right. Yeah. Check it out when you can, guys. But yeah, so the reason I'm bringing this up today is because I want to share some of the videos that, uh, that, that that are available. If you guys don't know this, we actually have the videos and we have um, the slide deck available from the Cabo trip. So if you guys keep hearing about this Cabo trip, the Cabo trip, uh, well, I, I'm telling you right now, it is very, very impactful. So I'm going to I'm going to post that there. Uh, just give me a second. I'm going to I forgot to go live on Facebook. I'm going to do that now. Awesome. Yeah. So this is, uh, I'm going to be doing this with you guys kind of live. I haven't, I haven't gone through these yet. So bear with me while we kind of see what, uh, what this, what these resources allow us. Okay. Oh my God. The guys, they're all here. They're all, oh my God. This is such, you don't understand how big this is guys. This is such a gem, like crazy unbelievable unbelievable like this is guys i'm telling you this you would have paid thousands of dollars to be here and this is really good um so hey let's just let's just go with the first one i don't know what, do you guys just want to go in order some of these are pretty long so we'll stop and we'll discuss sure yeah yeah okay all right let's start with brent oh this is this is good stuff man okay Okay, well, I'm going to wrap it up today, and we're going to get you out to the beach, the pool, having a great time tonight. Tomorrow night, we have our Bon Voyage party at 7 o'clock, Ford Edge. We're going to throw a party for you at 6 with music and food and drink, and then a huge dinner for everyone at 7, so make sure you don't eat milk tomorrow for as long as you can. And then, um, so all kinds of cool stuff. But and then the final thing is do not forget to go to the front desk and schedule your COVID test, right? Anyone want to go home to your family? Some of you are like, oh, I forgot. All the sanguines. Honey, did we do that yet? No? 
We have not done it yet. And there you go. I'm talking to the goats. Now, my kids are responsible. Have you done it yet? See, she said yes. Alyssa, wave at people. Well, that's Alyssa. Megan over there, wave. Dylan and Christina in the back, wave. Dylan and Christina. And my dad's in the room. Elvis is in the room. Jim Go right there. There he is. My dad. He said, I never amount to nothing. There you go, dad. No, I'm just kidding. He, he's like, you can do it, son. You're awesome. I was one of those fortunate ones who had a dad who hugged me, loved me, and said I was special. I'm very special. <laughs> my mom, too. I really hit the lottery. I truly did. And then where's my wife, Kathy? Give Kathy. I heard she spoke this morning at the women's thing. Awesome. Okay. So I'm going to go fast. You have to listen fast. It's December 29th. It's 11.33 p.m. It's 1999. It's Baghdad. Baghdad, Iraq. December 29th, 1933. A little boy is born into this world during, you know, I mean, a war-torn nation. And this little boy grows up on concrete. That is his bed. They don't have mattresses. He literally grows up sleeping on concrete until he's about seven years old. Then his whole family leaves and comes to the United States. It's now uh, 2005, 2006. They land in a really sweet town in Iowa, right? No, they land in New York City with $100 in their pocket wintertime. And they get jobs as dishwashers, cooks, whatever they had to do to survive, man, hawking corn dogs, whatever you're talking about. And then from there, they, they just scrimp, save, and they realize they need to get out of New York. And in 2012, they go to an affordable city, San Jose, California, Silicon Valley. And then there, they, they wash dishes, they cook, they struggle, they strive. And in uh, 2016, 17, maybe 16, they open a car lot. They start selling used cars, theirs. They had four cars. This is just a few years ago. And then, and it was after six months, nobody was buying their, their cars. And so they, that little boy that was born in, in 1999, 1133, uh, 1999, 11.33 p.m. at night, December 20th, who grew up stepping over bodies on his way to school, he was young and he was able to see what was happening on the internet and he copied the other car lots and he started running ads on the internet, people showed up and bought all the cars. And his name is Abbas. And they go, Abbas, this is amazing. You're saving the family. This is just a few years ago. And he's like 17 years old. And he starts running these ads and they start selling more and more cars. And their family's now thriving in San Jose. But Abbas, about three or four years ago, he's now 19 years old. He gets a credit card in the mail. The credit card's got a $5,000 limit. He's trying to figure out what he's going to do for his life. That will 5000 put you through college. So he does the next best thing. He sees that you can become a real estate agent without any prior knowledge. And these online courses. So he takes that credit card. He pays for his studying. And, and he gets his real estate license at 18. Then a boss hits the phones, calls hundreds and hundreds, thousands of people in San Jose. And after half a year, has zero luck. He actually called over 4,000 people. And then he goes, hmm, I'm going to hire someone from the Philippines. So he hires some of the Philippines. Now they call 4,000. He calls 4,000. And then he gets two headsets and a mojo dialer. He's called, and then somebody responded. Just sheer numbers and willpower and the, 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 the desire to make it. And I think from that point on, the next 12 months, he sold 12 homes. Didn't light the world on fire, but San Jose, the commissions are okay. I think he made like uh, $340,000 once he kind of got through the, the suffering. And the next year, a few more. His third year, which was last year, he made $1.7 million. He's 23 years old. He bought 60 places. And I think he was in contract for another 250. This year, he's going to buy 1,000 doors. And he's an amazing human being who just persevere beyond all i mean everybody count them as out his family everything and a boss is in the room today a boss i don't know where you are but stand up man i just want to recognize you in the back there's a boss you are a boss a boss 1999 i love america loves the underdog story man here comes sea biscuit right 
All right, let's stop there for a second, guys. Uh, what do you what did you take away from that so far? Has anyone taken anything away from that? That anything's possible. Yeah. Consistency. Consistency. Using using leverage. Using leverage, yeah, a lot of those things. Does anyone want to expand on that a little bit more? Because the story about this kid, and I met a boss. He's he's literally in his early twenties, and he's going to buy a thousand units this year. He's in contract to buy these big these big buildings. He raised, I think he raised like twenty eight million dollars, and he's a kid. So I want to hear someone else's uh, excuse why they're not doing what they're supposed to do. Think about that for a second, guys. Like he has, he literally had everything stacked against them, like no privilege, nothing. And like, he has made it work from she being sheer relentless. Like that's really just relentless is I guess the best word for describing him Be being that, being that young, being that young and, and figuring out how to get listings in San Jose, like these average home prices in San Jose are well over a million dollars. And he did it. So a lot of us are trying to make excuses why we haven't gotten any listings yet, right? Oh, it's a bad market. It's, you know, there's no inventory. It's really hard to get listings right now because, you know, everyone's going after listings. Yeah, I mean, that may be possible, but have you made thousands of phone calls yet? You know, have you figured out that the more people you talk to, the better odds you're going to have? You know, a lot of us know that it's a numbers game, but are we really doing anything about it? Or are we just kind of sitting, waiting for something to happen? Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that you guys are literally doing that but some of us are you know some of us might be you know including myself i haven't made enough calls to be where i want to be so let's just really be real with ourselves for a second and, and really take this story and get inspired by it who here is who here feels inferior and who here who here feels inspired by the story that you just heard i'll be the first to speak go for it belinda um because i I'm, I'm a believer of the first thing that comes to your mind is a limiting belief and the first thing that hit me soon as he said the phone calls was, what about the DNC list? Yeah. So that for me, I'm going to write down and I'm just going to really deal with that because mm -hmm. that's been a block for me. Yes, of course. That and do it should not be. call list. Oh, yeah. And it should be. Absolutely should be. Good. Uh, are there ways around that? Uh, right now, as I think about it, you know, besides my own phone book or paying a company that's going to tell me who's on a DNC list. It's, it's like there, there's a bunch of things that can come up that would say, you know what, you're right, stay away from that. Yeah, of course. But, Instead of digging through it and figuring out how can I get this data scraped? How can I get it already um, ran through the DNC list? There's a lot of things that if we, if we just say, hey, this is a problem. Yeah, of course. Oh, I'm not going to do that because I don't want to get in trouble. You know, it's true. It's a valid concern, but it's not an impossibility. Right, Belinda? Correct. Correct. It's not. Yeah. So what, what are you going to take away from just this message so far that you're going to find a way? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue to find a way and mm -hmm. be comfortable, uh, be confident yeah. and know that every call that I make is technically the right call. Absolutely. Now, I know the answer to your, uh, solution, to your question. Uh, Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, I know the answer to your question, but I'm going to let other people here help you out with this. Um, continue. I think that was Tammy that was getting ready to speak. Oh, sorry, Tammy. Go ahead. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll add one thing you said, be comfortable. First of all, you got to be uncomfortable. By that video, I was expired. And with Mojo, they do have the do not call where you can separate it, but I call them anyway because the do not call list was explained to me. I forgot what it is. And people that actually is on a do not call list, they answer and they will talk to you. Mm -hmm. So I guess you got to find that peace within you. And my thing is, I know when I'm making phone calls, my, my goal is to help people. And sometimes people on that do not call list for other reasons. So um, yeah, I just wanted to add, you got to get out of your because you want to be uncomfortable and like I said, I'm inspired and I know I need to make more calls very good and that's it very good I love it I love it anyone else all right all right let's continue hearing guys this is good stuff all right we're gonna break in into into little you know breakouts like this from time to time but let's continue with the video 
remember that movie? And he's talking to the, just because the horse is old and a little banged up, doesn't mean it's, and, it, and it's kind of the trainer in this. And, and we love the phoenix rising from the ashes. Realize the moment you're in, man. You're a part of a movement. This has never happened before in your life. But like I said a few days ago, the biggest enemy is the inner me. It's what you're saying to yourself. You're still doing it. Well, look at, you know, Chuck Keller with the cool shoes. And, and look at, I mean, Glenn, stand up. That is an awesome shirt. Give Glenn a hand today. I mean, I couldn't get a shirt like that. And, and, and then, of course, you saw our Canadian friends. He's here to pump you up. He can bench press 400 pounds. I'm positive. He's working on himself, and he's a stud and all this stuff. And, and here's the deal. Just be authentically you. Can you think the speakers are being them? Can you be you? So quit do what I did in golf when I couldn't putt for a while. I'm actually, my putter is fuego. I am on fire with the putter. But here was me. <laughs> I'm five feet away. I'm going to miss. Some of you are doing that in real estate right now. You do it on your listing presentations. You do it on your buyer presentations. You do. I'm going to show some of the model explained again. They're not going to get in. This is works for other people. It does not work for me. The enemy is the enemy. It's what you're saying to yourself. You got to say, I got this, baby. I got this. Simon, I got this. I got this. You got to, you got to figure it out. It is you. you. You are the solution. You are the problem. Anybody believe that? I mean, is it me? Am I holding you back? Is, am I the one doing it? It must be Gene. Must be Glenn. I mean, is it the state broker in your state holding you back? Come on, be a victim. Tell me who's holding you back. I want you to be a victim. Do it, do it, do it, man. Oh, no. See, this isn't a capital risk. It's all ego. Your ego is keeping you broco. Okay? You got to be like, I was on the, um, we rented a yacht. I've never done it before. 160 foot yacht. It was my birthday. It was a splurge. Okay. We're on top of the yacht. We climbed ropes and got on top of the top of the yacht where you're not supposed to be. The captain said it was cool. One at a time. And you look over the edge and it's 50 feet down to the water. It's a big yacht, 160 foot. And people are jumping off, jumping off. And I lean over and I'm like, oh man. And everyone's, you know, everyone's so encouraging. So you can do it, Brent. You can do it. I lean over again. Oh man. Because I'm like, hell no, I'm not jumping. Hell no. I'm flipping. Oh, man, I'm flipping. And I'm like, there you go, three, two. And I made peace. I made peace with landing on my back. From 50 feet. I made peace with landing on my face. I made peace with it, man. You need to make peace with it. You know what happened? I landed on my feet. <laughs> Jesus. I, I nailed it, man. No splash. I could have won a gold medal. But I was okay with face planning. Always have been, always will be. I don't want to fail, but I'm willing to fail to learn and grow. That's how you learn and grow. But, but you, again, you're, this is an ego risk. You, you know Mako because you know Kolo. Right? Seneca noticed it thousands of years ago, that Greek philosopher. Is he Greek? Roman? I don't know. Seneca. We'll make him Italian. That's sexy. The Italian philosopher, Seneca. What he said in this, he says, it is not because things are difficult that you do not try. It's because you do not try that things are difficult. Whoa! The guy, I mean, this is like not new. People laying around in Rome years ago, man, going, oh, it sucks out there. Sucks being a Roman. Give me some more grapes. You know? And then the doggone Vikings come in and give them some hell because they were hungry. Are you hungry for change, not more stuff? Are you hungry to make a difference? Are you, are you living a life of quiet desperation? Are you going to die with your music in you? Or do you have a song to sing? I mean, sing your song. That's what I do. I don't care. Just sing it. People, do people love authenticity? Oh my gosh, they eat it up. So be authentic. I mean, I'm tripping over stuff all the time. I've almost fallen three times. But you're like, oh, I gotta look good. I gotta look like Rick Chiha. So I knew him before he looked that good. John McCash, he's the coolest, vibey, kind of a hipster-looking dude. I love him. I couldn't do that. So I'm me. What's that? Polo shirt, golf polo shirt. Usually shorts. I got dressed up for you guys, right? 
So here's the deal. August 9th, 1990. Something happened to me August 9th, 1990. It's a moment. Realize the moment you're in. Where were you doing August 9th, 1990? I was in Disneyland. I was in Anaheim, California. I'm standing on a brick ledge. Main Street, the parade comes down. I get lost from my group. I'm, I'm probably eh, maybe this high from the ground trying to find my group. Everybody's on the sidewalk. And you know you won't believe this, but I lost my balance. Oh, backwards, but like this, like a stage dive. And I, there's 100,000 people in the park that day, true story. And I hit a woman. You guys hear about liability? Talk about attorneys and, and injury lawsuits. I took her to the pavement. I literally, <laughs> I'm big. Well, thank God that woman was my wife. I landed, I fell for Kathy. Right then, two story, August 9th, 1990, 102 p.m., I fell off that ledge. And she, she was walking by, you know, you know, yanked on me. I fell for her. And that's what happened. She's like, oh, no, I just happened to be walking by right then. So first time we ever spoke, 30 minutes, I'm like, okay, God, I got it. Anyways, all right, so September 21st, 2016, 9.31 a.m., text across my phone. Anybody get text today? Who remembers the day and the time of one little text? See, so realize the moment you're in, the time you're in. Sheila Fairground, my sponsor, sent me a text. Brent, I need to talk to you. <laughs> little would I know that text would change my life. And, of course, that begun my, my EXP journey where I got to meet Gene and Susan. I mean, I knew Gene from earlier, but not super well. Rob and Jen Flick, didn't know them. And Elizabeth Riley and Glenn Sanford changed my life. And then December 6, 1985, 9 p.m., it was a Friday night. I listened to ex-heavy metal rock and roller Daryl Mansfield share why he's a Christian. Ex-heavy metal rock and roller gets free Christian concert. And I was like, what's the meaning of life? I'm like 19. And I listened to him share his story, his testimony. And I, you know, I believed in Jesus and stuff. And, and I'd be, you know, you know, you get so drunk. You're like, God, save me. I'll never do it again. All right. I mean, you know, I don't know what they mean. If you're Buddha, that's fine. I didn't say Krishna or whatever. I'm, I'm a, you know, you're. Depending upon where you are in the world, I'm American, I'm a Christian, I know the story of Jesus, he cruised in on a donkey, you know, Palm Sunday, and he died on the cross and all that stuff, but I realized I didn't know him, so I made a decision in faith for Christ to change my life, so that was cool. So, why am I telling you that story? Because if you want to succeed and be a part of a movement, create a movement, you need to build the love boat, right? That went down. You are building the love boat. People love being around people. Then they feel loved and accepted and inclusive. You want to be inclusive. We're going to build a culture that's inclusive. You want to grab people and say, come with us. You want to do the hot dog barbecue on a Saturday, a picnic on a Sunday, get, rent the beach house, Airbnb the cabin at Tahoe, invite people to come, create, write this down, create magic moments. Tony Robbins says he's a He's the master at creating magic moments for his family and for his friends and, and people in business. Part of walking across those coals, it's a magic moment, right? And my family, I went to Monday night. They took me to dinner at the Three Mermaids here in Cabo for my birthday. I'm telling you, it was the most incredible thing I've ever experienced. It was a little special. They created a magic moment for me, especially when that sombrero hit the back of my head and the mariachi band at the end of dinner. And the fireworks show in my face. Anybody have a birthday here? You know what I'm talking about. They know how to do it. So here's the deal. I want to give you a little bit of content. We'll get you out of here. So you hear about different ways to share XP. There's the direct approach. Watch the model explained with them. I'll say it again. Watch the model. Get on a plane, drive. Rick Jiha, I drove to Walnut Creek and sat with you and Casey. And I watched the model explained and then Casey interrogated me very sweetly, but I drove there on a Friday night, Friday night barrier traffic. I, I, you, 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 a lot of people get that wrong. So that's the direct approach. The indirect approach, invite them to local events. Um, how to become a powerhouse listing agent, how to build a hundred million dollar sales team, dominate your market with social media. Like, well, I don't know how to do that. And that's not happening in my market. You start, you heard someone say sooner, Brent, how many people at your first meeting, Ken? 
right? Start with a handful of people at your title company, invite people to come. Then it goes to 20, 40, 80, 100. The people sponsor the people, write that down. The people sponsor the people. All the guests that are here, they're like, I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Everybody's in, everybody's coming. It's the, it's the conversations at the pool, at the beach, or at the restaurants here. It's pretty cool. And then major events like Cabo, like Build, like shareholders, like EXP Con. Oh my gosh. Write this down. The business belongs to the promoters. The promoters. I My first event, I showed up with 19 on my front line and 90 in my group. I understand promoting. You saw the image Don Yoakum had with the events, and there was a guy underneath it, and, and the, the events do the heavy lifting. Because it's, it's where this thing takes a 12-inch drop from your head to your heart. But if you're not getting people to events, you're not saying, look, I'll pay for half your ticket. I'll, I'll, I'll pay for half your flight. I'll pay for your flight. You get your wife. I got you. I'll pay for the room the first two nights. You pay for the last four nights. I'll, I'll, I'll invest my money. This is going to change your life. I say to people all the time, if you go, Rodney, and you don't think it's worth 10 times what you spent, I mean 10 times, I will personally write you a check back for your airline ticket and your room. Do you guys do that? I do that all the time. I have a guest here named Gabe. I paid for his room. It's four thousand dollars. We 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 paid for his flight over a thousand dollars. Like he's in this room. It's five thousand dollars to get him here. You know, Shelly and her her partner Craig sat next to her husband Kevin. It gets confusing, but um, right. I paid for the room. It was like one night, right? This guy's gonna pay for our hotel room. Invest money, but I got them. You heard Gail said she paid for 30 people to come to Dallas. Now she has over 100 in her business. Invest in your business. Look at people and say, if you don't think it's worth 10 times what you spent, no questions asked. Or seem like, where do I get the money? I don't know. You figure it out. It's like, well, it's easy for you to do. I did that when I didn't have the money, but I had children I could rent out for cheap labor, <laughs> right? I mean, you just figure it out. Sell the TV, a couch. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Let's take a, let's take a break there for a second, guys. I mean, it's hard for me to stop this video because I was there and I'm just like still so like enthralled in what he's saying that there was so much he just gave us in the last 15 minutes that if the only meeting you on the only session you went to while you were in Kabul was his, you'd be lit on fire. But there were literally 30 more speakers that were just as good as Brent. So this is why I'm telling you guys that these events are, are powerful. They're very powerful. So from what Brent has said, from the moment uh, I started the video again, what, what, do, what is sticking in your head? What, what, is, um, what is really resonating with you guys right now? I'll tell you right now what, what, really, what really hit it for me was the, the analogy he gave us when he uh, flipped off of the captain's, uh, I guess the crow's nest, uh, that, that highest point on the boat. Think about that for a second, right? For a lot of you guys who are scared of heights or scared of uh, deep sea, uh, that is literally like the analogy of like, okay, well, if you can get over that fear, why are you not flipping in your business, right? Think about that. Now, I'll let you guys talk because I do a lot of talking on these, but these, these meetings are, are more for you than they are for me. Even though I get a lot out of them, I want to hear you guys. Don't let fear hold you back. Just go for it. Yeah, what other part of what other parts of um his uh session so far are you really like oh my god like i needed to hear this the boat when he jumped imagine that, and right? he yeah and he landed on his feet yeah he, did. he thought he was gonna land on his face but he landed on his feet yeah and that's the thing he was okay with landing on his face or on his back he said i made peace with it but some of us are scared to land on our face and on our and our back uh, while we're still on solid land and we're just all we're trying to do is maybe talk to a stranger and we're worried about that right and what's the worst that can happen someone's gonna say no you're not gonna land on your face land on your back someone's just gonna say no so how big what big of a deal is that all right somebody else somebody else because sarah participates a lot so sarah thank you for that um i think it's great that um that's something similar in the sense that sometimes you don't need to know everything. Yeah. You don't need to know the details. You just concentrate and focus and kind of have that trust and faith and believe in yourself and you figure the way, you figure it out. Um, sometimes we, we, we tend to psych ourselves out. We tend to focus on what's going on. 
kind of focus on the big prize. And, and if you focus on the big prize and, and trust yourself, it's just not, not, not gonna, he's going to, he's going to guide. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. That's good. That's good stuff. I love what he said about Seneca, the philosopher, how, you know, things are difficult because we don't try. And that's true. I mean, how true, how much more true can it get? You know, it's, it, we don't try because they're not, because it's difficult. It's difficult because we don't try. That was so deep. Like that should just resonate with you guys so much. You know, if we don't have something and we think, oh, it's way out of our reach, it is out of your reach because you haven't tried, you know, so simply put. Uh, all right, I'm going to start the video again, unless someone else wants to add a uh, comment and commentary. What I'm yeah, going to get... that first part, Lewis, is if you want something out, you better put something in. And uh, that just reinforces what I've been trying. I've tried a lot of things in the last nine months since I've been licensed, and some of them I probably will not do a second time. Yep. But I've tried some things, and he just reinforced, you got to be willing to try. you got to put something in. And I've... I, what I would say now, especially my wife would say, you've wasted some money, but I, I don't think I did. I think I learned a lot from the things that I tried. So yeah, you've invested in the future the growth of your business is what you've done. Yeah. 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 Luis, I was just going to say that, ah, well, uh, yeah, Brent, uh, uh, he took a chance and uh, it paid off, uh, you know, and, and sometimes we are afraid of of taking that risk mm -hmm. uh, because we we are afraid of the results and this guy uh, gave it all he got and and it paid off yeah absolutely I, I couldn't say enough to reinforce that statement john thank you and you're the same way john uh, you, you're just you're, i think you and you and brent are very much alike and guys just to give you an example uh brent is hasn't even closed his first transaction yet, right? He's still working on his his, um, his pipeline. He has a few deals in the pipeline, but he already has his first tier filled. He's already got five agents that have joined the company because of him. And now the, the only reason why Brent did that was because because Brent is 25 years old. He's a good looking guy, you know. He he's really suave. No, of course, no. Brent is does not fit the perfect mold of what you would think. Like, oh, this is guy's gonna be perfect attractive. No. Brent is a, a, Brent's already lived his life. He's already done a lot of great things already. He could have said, you know, I'm good. I'm just going to retire now. But he hasn't. He's come in with just as much vigor and gumption as that 20-something-year-old guy, and he's making it happen. A lot of times he's doubted himself, and we had to walk off that ledge together, but he is literally doing phenomenally, and anyone here can do that, guys. And you can't blame it on your age, on your gender, on your skin color. There's nothing you can blame it on. Because he, he is doing it. John's going to do it. A lot of you on this call are doing it. Can I just add uh, two things that I wrote down um, aside? Um, that's going to be the opposite of the fair. Uh, Brent said people sponsor the people and the business belongs to the promoter. Absolutely. Those two things resonated with me yeah. deeply. Yeah, squeaky wheel gets the oil. All right, guys, let's continue. This is good stuff. Let's see how much more time. We got 15 minutes. Zeal. A sense of urgency. A sense of urgency. That's what people lack. Write that down. A sense of urgency. What do you mean? You show someone the modelexplained.com and you go, hey, do you have five or 10 minutes? Because I want you to meet Pete Middleton. I want you to meet Chuck Kelly. Do you have five or 10 minutes? I want you to meet Joey Satriano. He's amazing. You, are you with me? And it's five or 10 minutes. So do you have an hour you can schedule out? Who has an hour they can schedule out? Right? It's Starbucks. You see seven cars in the line, you're like, hell no. You see two or three, maybe. It's empty, go. We have no patience. Or maybe it's just me. Right? But it's five or 10 minutes. Of course, we'll talk 15, 20, 30 minutes. And then, then the next day, you want them to talk to somebody every day. They'll be like, I'll call you next week. By next week, they cool off. Time decay. Write that down. Time decay will kill you in your sponsoring process. You got to be a little ADD. You got to be a little passionate. Sense of urgency. Why did I sponsor 25 people in my first five months? Because I had a sense of urgency about it. And I was like, no, you can't do it today. Tomorrow, you got to have time. Morning, afternoon, what do you got? Well, I'm saying, all right. I, could, I guess I can do something in the afternoon. Great, six o'clock. Well, I don't know if, if Dave Gavin is free and if Tracy's free at six o'clock tomorrow. Book it. Because if they're busy, call Gene. Hey, look, Dave and Tracy couldn't make it, but I got Gene. Everybody calls him anyways. 
right? But so here's the deal. Book it. And, and if someone cancels, don't you dare say, hey, Dave, sorry, uh, my client canceled. I never did that once. I, I would double, triple book. if I. Th you, ever, you know how they kind of, I don't think you're going to show. You ever get that gut feeling? I'd book somebody else. I'd have two people book for the same time. And then if they showed, I called them and, hey, something's come up. We got to bump you out about 30 minutes. Okay, can we do it in 30 minutes? I was fanatical about it. But guess what? I sponsored 25 in five months. At least 25, they weren't new. They sold at least 10 homes a year. And they had to be excited about replicating and duplicating. If they were excited about production, see you later. Okay, that was me. I know you hear different things in the end of thing. I'm just telling you what I did. Is that free? If they wanted to sell a lot of homes, I want them, my people had to want to sell less. Now, if they were making enough money, then sell more homes. But the people I talked to were successful. And I would actually say, why don't you just back off from 60 homes a year or 50 or 40 to 50, 40 or 30 and take that margin and put it into EXP. I found 25 people who wanted to replicate duplicate and emulate. And that's why I had unparalleled success. I mean, by the end of this year, there's a good chance I'll have 10 of my legs at a thousand or more. Not one big leg and kind of a half leg and then a bunch of FLQAs. I mean, I'm looking for 20. We're looking, why do I need more money? No, I don't. I want to change lives. Write down this word, desperate. Some of you are not desperate enough. I guarantee you a boss is not comfortable. I also guarantee he's not slipping on concrete anymore. You do not see the opportunity that is around you. There's so much opportunity. So it's about value, value, value. And of course, we talk to them about production if they need help with that and listings new come from value. And we constantly invite them to events where we're teaching them about listings and social media and all that. And it's a great follow-up to them like, wow. And at our events, we don't talk about prospecting or recruiting or rep share at all. It's all about how to get listings, how to get buyers. But I was specifically looking for that person. He's like, oh my gosh, that rev share thing, that's what I want. That was my secret sauce, okay? And, and because of that, it exploded. So I'll say that. Finally, do not fumble. What do you mean fumble? The, okay, I'm signing up. And then you send them to join.exprealty.com and then they put somebody else's name down as sponsor because they didn't understand that part. Or they couldn't find you, so I put my sister down. I mean, I've seen this stuff happening. You go with them to that. Sheila was with me. I literally watched the model explain.com with Sheila. And she was, are you, I go, wow, this is amazing. Light bulb pop. I'm looking for that light bulb pop. And she is, okay, are you serious about due diligence? Yeah. And she's, okay, type this in your browser, join.exprealty.com. Now you're not joining, but by filling out a short application, you're going to get an IC, an independent contractor's agreement, and you can read through it and do your due diligence. Does that sound good to you? Yes. How many of you show the model explained and sign them up and you're the sponsor? I remember watching it. She told me to, to type in, type this in, type, ready? Join dot exp realty. I did that. She's okay, put your name here. And I just started filling out the form. Sponsor, that's who you put me, Sheila Fairger on. She showed me and signed me up a $100 million time, team all in one shot. Was that smart of her, yes or no? You guys show them, give them guest passes to the world, let them walk all around. Like, are you kidding me? Right? Are you with me? So don't fumble. The other thing is, another key thing, the first 30, 60 days after they come, you can fumble. If they don't get paid right, fumble. If they're frustrated with their avatar, fumble. If they can't get their EXP email forwarded to their Gmail, fumble. And then they're missing important emails. Like, ah, man, all hands on deck the first 30. Well, you seem pretty intense about this. Yes, we're changing lives. We're making a difference. I immediately, is my daughter back there? Christina, raise your hand, Christina, are you back there? Stand up, raise your hand. There's my daughter, Christina. Raise your hand, there, I see her. She was marketing my listings eight hours a day, five days a week. The second we joined EXP, I go, you no longer market listings. You are signing up people for EXP eight hours a day, five days a week. Because I'm not gonna do it. I signed up, my business cards arrived, my avatar was built, my website was up. There's my picture, there's my phone number, there's an email. I go, man, Glenn Sanford is so good. She says, Dad, I did all that for you. I gave Glenn credit. She's, oh, so this doesn't happen automatically. Those thousand bits. She goes, 
I did it all. And the light bulb went on. Oh my gosh, what if I had a concierge service, white glove service? We do it because you guys all love doing paperwork BS stuff, right? Setting up websites, ordering your business cards, learning how to build an avatar, all that stuff. You like that? Gmail, you get it, right? No? She signed up hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people. Sophia, stand up. Sophia now is in charge of my onboarding department as well. I had to get, thank you. I had to get two people working eight hours a day, 16 hours a day, five days a week. And then we taught and we created many more. And like, well, EXP has that. They've also gone from 80 agents to 2,200. They hire new people. I'm not taking Rodney, my new agent. Are you with EXP yet? Give Rodney a hand. Now, come here, come here. I love Rodney close that wasn't a cheesy close we're close i actually thought he was here so here's the deal but i'm not going to feed him to a new onboarding person the exp they may do a great job or they may not but i knew christina i knew sophia would nail it nordstrom's level service you you know you jump how hot because i'm intense i'm passionate i have a sense of urgency and a desire to do it right not fumble the ball you will see when they get paid wrong and they're supposed to get a certain percentage and they get all the check. And then their team leader's like, hey, Rodney, I need you to give me a check for eight grand. You got paid too much. I'm like, I don't think so. I've seen it happen. They get paid wrong and they don't want to pay back the eight grand. They're on a team. It was 60, 40. I get my 40. And they're trying to get them to pay 8,000. The team leader, what? It, they, well, they didn't do that. No, you didn't do it right. You need to be ADD about making sure they get paid right. The first one, once the first one goes through, it's smooth sailing. You with me? And so... I'm telling you, super, super. Words, words mean something. I'm begging everybody. I get introduced all the time. Hey, this Gene, he's my downline. That is a very, it doesn't even sound good. Does that sound really good? Um, uh, so and so, this is my upline. Those are network marketing buzzwords. We are a real estate company. We don't sell products, goods, and services. Nothing wrong with network marketing. Love it. I'm proud of people not watching TV and sitting around doing nothing in life. We are a real estate company. We help buyers and sellers. Please never, ever say the word downline or upline again. This is Gene. He's my business partner. This is Rodney. He's my business partner. We are all what? Business partners. It's not, well, they're in my cross line over here. No, this is a business partner of mine. Pete, Pete Middleton. Pete's not my business. It's my business partner, Chuck Keller. Chuck Keller's not my business. He's not, he's a, he's a business partner because if he does well, my stock goes up. If Pete Middleton does well, my stock goes up. Matt Batty at in the back upper left-hand level there. If Matt Batty does well, my stock goes well. If I do well, what happens to your stock? It goes up. I've never seen that. All those years at Remax, stars at Remax did well. I was like, let's go to Taco Bell, right? I went to Keller Williams. Remember the guy, Lance, whatever, Loken, whatever his name was? Gary's pet guy, thousands of homes. He's been doing it three years. I'm not, I didn't, I didn't mean it to sound like it did, but here's the deal. I realize how it's, I mean that sincerely, but here's the deal. What did it change for me financially? What did it change for you financially? If anyone kills it here, if, if Greece goes well, EXP does what? Well, if EXP does well, what happens to your stock? Does Greece matter to you even if you're not in Greece? How about Jamaican Republic? How about Poland? Nigeria? Are you thinking about Chile and Argentina? Because I am. I'm already excited about Costa Rica and Panama. And you're thinking, I'm just trying to deal with Fresno, California. Look, as we grow worldwide to 100 countries, you will benefit your kids. You don't even have to be there. There's only one company on the planet that happens that it's ours. Yeah, let's hear it for that. Okay, finally, on the home stretch, scripts, they're important, yay? Are they important? You do got to know them. But listen to me. I have people learn all the scripts. This is not working for me. Well, why isn't it working for you? Because it's not what you say. It's how you say what you say. Because here's the deal. People listen to the music. Like, hey, my name's Franco. Love to talk to you about EXP. I'm sure you're frustrated at your current brokerage and you could, you know, like whatever, you know, it's like a, but it's, it's, a, it's like, oh my gosh, Jeff Williams. I'm thinking about leaving Keller Williams and, and I need your opinion. Well, I'm not leaving Remax. Exactly what he said. I go, hey, knucklehead, I'm asking as my friend for you to stop me from going to Keller Williams. Like, show me what I'm missing. And he's like, oh, then after I joined, well, I've already joined. We've already joined. Hey, 
I'm, I'm thinking about putting a lot of energy into EXP this year. I don't want to make a mistake. Rodney, I respect you. Barry, I respect you. Okay. Yeah. Eric, I respect you. Would you show yeah. me what I'm missing? And, and then it's how you say, and they're like, like, well, I don't want to leave the Sotheby's. I'll go, Eric, stay at Sotheby's for 28 more years. I know you've been there 28 years. This isn't about you, Eric. You're my friend. It's about me. It's okay to say it then, right? If it's your friend. Remember uh, Fred with the Nolly? He did the little pouty face. Now they had a certain relationship. I'm not saying you shall do pouty faces. All this good. But they had a close enough relationship. Some of my friends, Steve Hillier, I said, shut up, sit down. We're doing this. It's my friend. You don't touch your friends like that. Okay. Anyways, and, and he didn't join, but years later he did. And now he's got he brought hundreds and hundreds of agents over. And so scripts are important, and, but it's how you say what you say. Finally, I need you to envision success. I want you to, I want you to know what it's like to have 19 legs at shareholders or Dallas. Shareholders is in June. June, you're a shareholder. I never went to shareholders at Remax because we weren't shareholders. I never went to shareholders at Keller Williams because there was one, Gary Keller. Franchises had shareholders events. So like, how do we get rid of this lemon, right? This, all this overhead. Don was just couldn't get rid of them quick enough. When he said 2006, I went, oh. It's not always good to be a shareholder at a company like that where you're responsible for the bills, right? And so guess what? Envision yourself at shareholders with 19 and 90. You got some work to do in Dallas, maybe EXP con. Imagine you had 19 frontline legs there and 90 in your group because you did what you had to do to promote that event. Can you, can you do that? Roll the video real quick. I want you to feel it. You're there. some tickets for people We're, we will sell this out we're going to have six thousand people there it's going to sell out we were under contract for two years in a row we didn't think we'd sell out the first year right it was like during covid we're like tony's like you guys are really going to do this he's like no one's doing this in north america like nobody and i'm like we're willing to flip off a yacht yes we're going to do this are you with me and so we did it and it, we blew that out and we're going to blow this out. So get some tickets, get some rooms, get some tickets. My group doesn't have tickets and rooms. Are you the leader? Now don't get 60 rooms and show up with three people. You will pay for the 60 rooms. We know who you are. We see the room blocks. We see what you're doing and we will not give you your money back for the room. And we're not going to give you your money because we're on the hook for thousands and thousands and thousands of rooms. So be responsible with the amount of rooms you get. Is that fair? Be responsible for the ticket. You need to buy my ticket back. No, we have huge millions of dollars in expenses to put this on. So be responsible. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so finally, um, Ford Edge. I want to put the Ford Edge tab up there real quick if you got that in the back. I want to do one last thing. We have that party tomorrow night at six. If you join Ford Edge and you're part of saving these beautiful, beautiful kids, I do a special Zoom. I'm telling you, 76,000 people. Do you think someone would give me $1,000 a month to personally coach them? Do you think I could get 100 people out of 76,000 to pay me to coach them? It's 100,000 a month, 1.2 million years. Is that good? I, I don't personally coach people because it would take too much of my time. So I don't do this. I do do a Zoom for hardcore crazies. I do it every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. 
I do 30 minutes. I go absolutely bonkers. It is nuts. And I only do it for Ford Edge supporters. And if you, if you sign up for Ford Edge and you show me that you signed up and you're donating monthly for the kids, I want nothing from you. I'm hoping you'll do at least 100 a month to Ford Edge. It's $1,200 a year every Tuesday at 1.30 p.m. Pacific. I do a 30-minute rip the cover off the ball, light my hair on fire, pull my, I mean, I, I go absolutely insane nuts. And it is good. It is really good. So here's how you'll get into it. You show me that you were signed up on your phone. I'll be around today, tomorrow, whatever. Walk up to me and I'll give you the special passcode, how to get into that Zoom. I personally will give to you. Don't email me. Don't text me. Come find me. I'll be at the pool the rest of the day. I do have a short dinner. I'm at Cabana 21 and 22. Walk up, show me. I will give you the special code. Please not give it to anyone else. I don't need, I don't want the money for me. I want the money for them. Is that fair? Okay, enough said. Hope you do that. Finally, we have an event we are doing in Maui. Does anyone like the idea of that? I've traveled all over the world. There is no better place in the world than Kanapali in Maui. And it, it's right here. So if you want to come, it's open to all the EXP agents worldwide. Everyone in the entire, you know, 20 countries now, you have to have 20 FLQA. We want you to make money. That's why I chose that number. Some of you are at seven, you're at nine, you're at 13, you're at 16. You need to be over 20. You need to unlock. That's about four levels of, of, of revenue sharing and 100 in your group. Anyone could come. We're going to open up um, registration August 1st. So you have time to qualify. Okay. Can I see some pictures? Oh, there it is. Here's the dates. Take a picture. Here's the website. You can, it says register now. You can't. We've got it locked till August 1st. It'll look like you can. You can't. Maui Invitational 23.com. But those are the dates. Save them January 29th to the 5th. We're going to do two three hour meetings. 3.30 to 6.30 on a Tuesday, 3.30 to 6.30 on a Thursday. What will we do the rest of the time? Imagine. In fact, let's go to the next slide. I think we have some slides of some stuff. This is the Sheraton Black Rock. And maybe we don't have the slides. But uh, Rob, we got those slides. More pictures of the hotel and the beach. No? Okay. All right. We had talked about that. All right. Cool. So imagine some really awesome pictures that make you do this. Okay? That make you get excited. It's going to be amazing. It's the Sheraton Black Rock. The guy runs out. That's Whaler's Village over there. Whaler's Lahan. Um, um, oh, Hula's, on, Hula's Grill. Leilani's. That's what I was trying to say. You guys know it. You know Leilani's right there on the beach. Hula Grill right there. That's Whaler's Village. This is Sheraton Black Rock. The guy comes out lighting torches along here all the way up to the end of the rocks. He gets to the end, and then he does this huge... Akapuku high dive off a 40 foot boulder into the darkness because it's dark by then. They light the torches every night. It's the coolest thing. You need to be here. You'll work harder for this than you will for yourself, but this will make you probably six, seven thousand a month in rev share, which is phenomenal. It's going to pay your house payments, going to pay your car payments. It's something you could do. Again, we're taking 400 people there. It's mainly about golf, sandcastles with kids on the beach, enjoying each other's company. It's going to be amazing. So there you go. And finally, God bless you. Thank you for coming to Cabo, you guys. Gene, get up here. Gene, get up here. Get up here, Gene. So it's the last time they'll see me with pants on. Yeah. So we're going to hit the pool and the beach all day. What, what a great event. Thank Come Gene on, and Susan for what you did. Thank you, Kathy. Glenn, Michael. Michael, everybody. Glenn, Michael, Jeff. Gave her, gave buddy, Kristen. Thank you guys. Love you guys. Love you. Go out there and do it. Go. <clears throat> All right, guys. That was just one of the. That was just one of the events. Oh, I'm sorry. One of the sessions that we had during that, and that was the closing session, by the way, uh, that we had at Cabo. And I let it run the whole way, the whole time through because I wanted you guys to see even what he was uh, talking about at the end, which currently right now, I don't even qualify for, but it, it is literally one of the best things you can do is set these targets. When they tell you there's an event that you have to qualify for, that's a motivator for me. I, I don't know about you guys, but just knowing that there's other people who, who, who will qualify and knowing that I'm not in that bucket yet, that just makes me feel like, okay, well, that means I need to step up my game. So <clears throat> you may not all be shooting for 20 FLQAs, which means that you need to have 20 people you've personally sponsored who have closed one deal in the last six months. 
you may not have that target on your horizon for this year, but you may have five or you may have 10, you know, for this year or 15, whatever, wherever you're at. But it just shows you that if you can just set these targets out where you have a definite date where your back's to the wall, you, you can make things happen. So I, I think that, you know, it was very important that we, we saw the entirety of this video. But now uh, we, we, we are running a little bit over time, but I just want to give you guys an opportunity. What are your overall thoughts about what you guys learned today, what you guys saw today? Uh, I'll, I'll open it up for you guys to discuss. Learn how to deliver your message. Can you expand on that, Sarah? Yeah. Um, when he was saying, like, when you want to attract, try not to be a recruiter. Yeah. At, you know, ask people questions. Because people get offended when you try to talk to them about bringing them to EXP. Sure. Ask them question. Let yeah. them answer. And I remember you, Louis, you said something um, two weeks ago. You said people will come on their own time. Yes. Just, you know, load them up with information. Mm -hmm. Let them think about it. Let it sink. Mm -hmm. And they will come on their own time. Because this is not a transaction. They're not, it's not like one plus one, two. Yeah. They, they need to think about it. It's a big decision. Absolutely. It, it's a huge decision. And you, you got to remember, guys, we're asking people to live their to, to, to leave their work family because people that have been working at years at an organization, they don't just like their coworkers. They love their coworkers. And yes. they're, they're worried about like, oh, my God, what will my peers say about me? What will my friends say about I'll lose these people in my life? That's and, so true. You know, so it's a very big decision. And it's, it's not easy. And maybe it's easy for you to make because you've already seen the other side. But for someone who hasn't seen the other side, you're asking them for a big, big ask. So all you have to do is love on them, teach them, educate them. And when they're ready, and don't forget about them, obviously. Don't just talk to them once and be like, okay, well, seeds planted. Don't need to water it. Don't need to shed any sun on it. I'll just, I'll just leave it here in the dark. You know, it's not the way it's done. <clears throat> Your job is to nurture that relationship as long as you're in business, as long as you're still serious about your business. If you're done with real estate, you're done with growing, then you don't need to worry about it anymore. But if you still have time left in you, you need to also remember that there's, there's seeds you've planted that need nurturing. Anyone else? Come on, guys. For me, it was just you just got to keep putting in the reps. Like the kid made 4,000 phone calls with no results. And then finally, when it clicked, it clicked. And now he's doing, you know, big time deals. Yeah, Exactly. Exactly. You know, what's funny is that once you've figured out the combination to the lock, you can't really close that lock anymore because you can always unlock it at any point, you know, but the hard part is trying all those different combinations until you finally get it. And he did it. I mean, you know, his combination is not going to be your combination and vice versa, but you will find it with time. And no one can tell you this is exactly what you need to do, because if it worked for me, maybe it won't work for you, but something else will work for you as long as you keep trying. <clears throat> I feel like when it comes to uh, expanding your, your your family, your business partners, they were like, you know, what are you investing in it? You know, like how he shared about that lady who, whatever it was, paid for 30 people or something like that. And now she has like uh, over 100 people. Like that just registered for me. Like I have to invest in my front line um, if I want to grow it. Like it can't just be calling on a whim it's got to be inviting people exciting people um and then also like sarah said like understand that they have to process it and and really befriend them like it's it's kind of it's almost like taking a girl out right i i, I gotta take her out to dinner you know i gotta write her letters and and let her know i'm genuine like i can't just uh, obviously if i can get to the home run the first day it's probably not the girl i want right but I think you guys get where I'm going with it. So I'm starting to see that, that it's, 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 it's a, it's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a long game for sure. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, what's funny is that once you've already figured that out and once you've kind of gotten into the momentum and the groove, then it just starts to snowball. It just gets crazy. It, it really does because you really have to understand something, right? I've always told people this, this analogy, like, Imagine trying to roll a boulder up a hill yourself, right? It's pretty hard and, and you're probably not going to do pretty you know, much with it unless you're a very, very strong, capable person. But imagine now if you had three or four or five people helping you with that boulder and then sooner or later, you with those people are going to hit the apex or the summit of that, of that hill 
and then then the ball or the or whatever the rock is going to start rolling down on its own right but you got to get to that summit first so there's no easy there's no more visual way i can really explain to you how this works and how this organization can take off but it doesn't happen by you just leaning against the boulder or by you just taking a break and and leaving the boulder there with a little pebble holding it up until you're ready again it really can it really it needs your consistent work and and, and your consistent energy until it gets there and then when it once it gets there then you can figure out okay now what do i need to do to maintain instead of what do i need to do to push you know so but until you you'll know when you're there <laughs> and including myself none of us are there yet all right so uh, that being said anyone else want to want to add before we go because it is getting kind of late uh, just real quick i know you said that you had the answer to my dnc oh yeah you, the answer to your dnc uh situation is that every reputable um uh, data source out there uh, does have the option for you to have the, the data scrub. So for instance, like Red X or Land Voice or all these other companies out there, they have the data back um, with the DNC. So um, you just need to filter those out or you can just obviously uh, pay someone to filter them out for you. Or, or, or even like, I think some of these systems allow you to just take those out automatically. But for instance, like if I get a list from uh, Land Voice, Land voice will have next to the to the numbers DNC 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 some you know most of them you know whatever a good part of them are DNCs so if you're really like um, trying to stay compliant what you could do is just pay someone from Fiverr to take all that data and just say okay do me if you're not good with spreadsheets I could literally do this in ten minutes but if someone never done this before just pay someone or maybe a, a niece or a nephew or someone or maybe your kids know how to do it just say okay anything with DNC next to it take it out I just want the the ones without the DNC you could you know you could do that. Uh, another thing you could do too uh, that, that works really well is, um, you know, you, you may want to just, if you're looking for sellers, you know, run ads you know, because sell it, there are sellers out there who are looking to sell their home. Um, there is a program in um, the EXP Enterprise called Make It Rain. And Make It Rain, what they do is they create ads for you uh, and they promote the iBuyer program. So, you know, people want to sell real quick for cash. Well, we have an iBuyer program that allows, well, it's called... Um, it's not called iBuyer. It's called, um, help me out with this, guys. What's it called? Fast Express buyer. Offers. Express Offers. <laughs> yeah, we have Express Offers program that allows you to say, look, I, we can buy your home cash. And you're not lying because we have institutional buyers that are partnered up with eXp Realty that will buy those homes cash. Now, they may not be for the right price. And if that's the case, then that means maybe you could talk that person into selling it traditionally on the MLS. Uh, a lot of us haven't even taken the time to look at that. Uh, I do my own version of that and, and, and it works, guys. I'm telling you right now, it does work. Uh, I'm giving uh, Belinda a listing in, in Georgia from my efforts uh, through something very similar to that. So everything works, guys. You just got to try it. You know, you just got to try it long enough. And if it doesn't work for you, the results you're looking for, then try something else until it does work. I, I, met, a, I met a guy last week who says that he has done for the last year and a half. And I love hearing these stories because it helps me. I, I learn from other people's experiences. He's, he's been sending out uh, handwritten letters, but the handwritten letters are done by a, a machine. Like he pays a company to make fake handwritten letters. The handwritten letters have gotten him uh, a lot of listing appointments. And I think he's closed like, I want to say like three to five listings in a very high end neighborhood. He's done that over the year, last year and a half. But he's also at the same time sent postcards, just random cold postcards, EDDM postcards for the last year and a half. And he's gotten zero results from that. So what that's telling me is like, okay, well, in marketing, you got to always be testing, ABT, always be testing. So I told him, I was like, if I were you, I'd double down on the handwritten cards and, and eliminate the EDDM. He's like, yeah, but what if, what if people stop seeing my face? I'm trying to brand my face. I said, well, wouldn't you rather brand your face on for sale signs on people's lawns than on postcards that no one's calling you on? He was like, oh, you have a point. I'm like, yeah, I think I do have a point. I mean, like you got to, you, you, you know, the answer but you just haven't asked the question, I said to him. So uh, that just goes to tell you guys, you always need to figure out what's working. And when you figure out something that works, guys, double down. Like that's, you know, we, a lot of times we overcomplicate things and we have the answer right in front of our face. And if we don't have the answer, it's because we haven't asked the right question. And once we do ask the right question, then we can figure out the problem to, uh, or the solution to all of the problems that we're having in our business. Make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right, guys, we're going to go. Anyone else? 
Cool, cool, cool. All right, thank you everyone for being here. We'll go ahead and uh, close out with a, with a prayer. Thank you, Father. We, we give you thanks for uh, always blessing and providing, Father. We thank you because you're the almighty and we've always looked to you for strength and relief. And Father, you, you've never let us down. Uh, Father, we ask you to continue blessing us and help us with our business. Uh, and bring us into this week, Father, with strength and vigor and the ability, Father, to just bless those around us. Father, let us do your will because we only we don't know, Father, what is best for us. We only trust that you will be with us along that path. Father, we also ask you to keep us healthy and those around us healthy and allow us to con continue um, walking with you, Father, and, and continue blessing the people that need it the most. Uh, hopefully, Father, we are able to be here, all of us, and even more people next Monday so we can hear the message that is going to change our lives and hopefully change the, the, the trajectory of our family and, and our future. And in Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have an amazing day. Have a good day, everyone. Go crush it, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.